people from Kansas City always remember where they were or what they were doing when the Hyatt Skywalks fell. It was a regular day. I had no reason to believe that it was going to be anything other than a Friday where I was going to have to work late a little bit. And then the chaos started. pulling bodies out of the rubble. It's been 40 years. I never felt so helpless and disorganized. The memories of those who were there. Immediately smell like death. Are as chilling. She was essentially, you know, crushed. As the footage. Something like that, people remember for a long, long time. On the Skywalk tapes in KMBC 9's archives. Well, I don't know if I can say it. I always refer to my life as BH and AH, both before Hyatt and after Hyatt. This is probably the worst disaster that's ever occurred in Kansas City. One of the worst man-made disasters in American history happened in this upscale part of a Midwestern city. July 17, 1981. Two suspended walkways collapsed inside Kansas City's Hyatt Regency Hotel. It happened at the worst possible time. The room was packed for a Friday night dance. 114 people died, more than 200 were hurt, thousands were affected, and the shockwaves are still being felt four decades later. The catastrophe is one survivors can't forget. Tie straight, all that good stuff. So this is how this goes. In the summer of uh, 1981, they decide to come up with this idea of tea dances. My name's Michael Mahoney. I'm a reporter for KMBC TV, and I was at the Hyatt Skywalks disaster as it happened. This is the newsroom for the presidential debate. Today, Kansas Citians know him as KMBC 9's veteran political journalist. Just another meeting of weekend sports car bus? Not really. Would you believe these people are learning how to drive? Things were different for Mahoney early in his career. I was uh, a feature reporter here in Kansas City. and That's the job I came to uh, when I took the job uh, early in 1980. So I've been here for about a year and a half. And uh, the, the beat was called the lifestyle beat. What if I told you about seven little health habits that wouldn't cost much money and very little time each day, but could add more than a decade to your life? Would you listen to it? I mean, the features were nice, but it was, uh, I, I really had a hankering to get back to, to hard news, but I thought I'd tough it out. I'm lifestyle specialist Michael Mahoney reporting the news. In July 1981, the job led him to a popular Friday night dance. The word got around that this was a pretty decent way to try and kick off the weekend. The 40-story Hyatt Regency Hotel had opened its doors one year earlier, the jewel of the Crown Center development. Mahoney and photojournalist Dave Forstate headed to the hotel's weekly tea dance. You know, uh, I mean, you know what Kansas City's like. Uh, people work hard and they like to socialize hard. Not knowing their lives and thousands of others would soon be in a dance with disaster. So we get down to, uh, to the Hyatt and uh, the event is already well underway. Place is swinging. Couples mainly middle age, fairly well to do, would attend these tea dances. The time, six o'clock. At the south end of the lobby, Rich Coble was playing trombone with the hotel band. Just as he had done at every Hyatt tea dance that summer. I think we literally got in the middle of the dance floor and Dave had the, his camera on his shoulder and he would just kind of swing around a little bit. Among the crowd, Karen and Eugene Jeter, seen here, married 17 days earlier. If love was in the air, 34-year-old Sally Firestone was hoping to find it. She was with the church singles group soaking up the atmosphere on a second floor skywalk one of the hotel's features specifically designed to impress. One of the traditions in Hyatt hotels at that time were to develop a lobby or an atrium that had striking design, a memo surfaced that discussed, we want to make sure that it has the JC factor. 
what that meant was we want to make sure that it had the factor that when you walked in, you went, Jesus Christ. Three 120-foot skywalks connected the north and south ends of the lobby, made of concrete, steel, and glass, each weighing 36 tons, and designed to look like they were floating. The fourth floor skywalk was 30 feet above the second floor skywalk on the lobby's west side. A third floor skywalk hung to the east, their views irresistible during crowded tea dances. Instantly, because we're looking for good sources of pictures, we're going, oh, from up there, that might be a nice angle. Let's try that. Former history teacher Annette Leiben and a friend were also on the second floor skywalk. So were six members of Topeka's Mariachi Estrella, one of the first all-female mariachi bands in the nation. The musicians were set to play an event in another part of the hotel. Band leader and violinist Teresa Cuevas was classically trained. With her, the band's trumpet player, 36-year-old Linda Skurlock. Recently divorced, her children were out of town with their father, leaving her free to travel with the band. The time now? nearly seven o'clock. There are pictures all over the place. It is a good, video-rich story, and uh, we're feeling pretty good about it. Capturing this was uh, a lot of fun. It was uh, a really nice night. The story was coming into focus as the band started an intermission. We had placed the rest of our gear over by the concierge desk uh, on the floor of, uh, of the Hyatt in the lobby. Mahoney and Four State likely passing by 11-year-old Dalton Grant and his family by the lobby's front door. The Prairie Village boy traded in his soccer jersey for dress clothes that night. Lemon-lime soda in hand, his family was near the bar where people had gathered to order drinks. Among them, avid outdoorsman Mark Williams and a friend. Like dozens of others, they stood right below the skywalk. <laughs> It wasn't long until the hotel band was back performing Duke Ellington's Satin Doll. Just six miles away at Baptist Memorial Hospital in Brookside, Dr. Joe Wackerly was wrapping up a shift in the ER. From Station 18, firefighter Mike Trader in the red hat was riding in an engine near 31st and Linwood. And police officer Vince Ortega was on patrol at 31st and Gillum Road, one mile from the Hyatt where photojournalist Dave Forstate was riding the escalator upstairs. It was a great looking shot. At five after seven on the mezzanine, the pair was waiting to do interviews. And I walked over to the uh, railing with Michael. In the lobby, Rich Coble was ending a trombone solo. But in the midst of melody, Mayhem took center stage. I heard this really distinct and completely out of place sound. Pop. 